it's so hard to describe just how incredible it is to drive this car at speed. I mean, it's really a certain kind of ecstasy. And then when you're sitting in the cockpit right between, you know, the engine and the sound blaring out the back, there's a vibration going through the car that it just, uh, it just gets through every part of your body. And it's such a beautiful sound, and yet it's kind of ferocious at the same time. Derek Hill and we've been driving the 250 GTO 64 Series 2 body. The GTO came about as a car that Enzo Ferrari wanted to build basically to handle the, the newer spec V12 engine that had the full Testarossa specs. It was really going to be something that would take the, the prior short wheelbase, which was a very successful car in its own right to a new level to match the new competition that was coming down the line. And, and what it turned out to be was a much lower, more aerodynamic car than the short wheelbase was. The debut of the GTO was March 1962 at Sebring 12 Hours, and my father was one of the drivers. He was a factory Ferrari driver at the time, and. He was just coming off really the pinnacle of his career at Ferrari. He had won the 1961 World Championship for them in Formula One. And he had won Le Mans three times with them and also Sebring 12 hours with them for three times. And those were the overall wins in the prototype cars. So here they show up in 1962 to Sebring and they're told they're gonna be in the GTO. Uh, the GTO was a GT car, the GT class was a level below the prototype class so it generally meant it wouldn't be a car that could go for the overall win so my father wasn't too happy about that of course and he felt that it was kind of a punishment maybe for for not being you know having signed a contract yet in 1962 it was early in the season before the formula one season was on its way yet he got into the car and the race went very well he was surprised how well the, the GTO could hang with the prototype Ferraris. And so all in all, you know, they did finish second behind one of the Ferrari prototypes, but they were first in class. And when it was all done, he was, he was very surprised what a great handling car it was. Little did they know that they were taking the first victory in a car that would become perhaps the most famous classic car of all time. This car, the 1964 GTO 5571, uh, which was really the first of the Series 2 body with the 64 style body. This was a, it was an important car in that it won some great races. It won the Daytona Continental 2000 kilometers and my father raced it in that, in that race. And that was the race in 1964 that would become a couple years later, the 24 hours of Daytona you know, today. This particular car also won first in class at Sebring and also at Nassau, uh, which my father took that win for them as well.
GTO became so iconic because there's a certain mystique and reverence about it being so rare. They built only 36 of these and all 36 still survive to this day. Each one has its own unique history. They all have their little differences. There's no doubt that all of that adds up to making them perhaps the most valuable cars in the world. The car is very comfortable to sit in. I mean, it's uh, just like the body was wrapped around every component with, with minimal clearances. That's how I feel when I get in the car. I'm six foot two, and I, I don't think I have one inch to spare anywhere in there. But once you're in, it's very comfortable. The shifter is unlike anything else I've ever experienced. It's like this, it's like holding a, a, a pool ball, you know, on the end of this tall stick. And it's just so perfectly placed. And you think at first, what is it with this giant lever? But you get in there and you start shifting, and you're like, this is just exactly where you want the shifter to be. They were able to produce 300 horsepower on these cars. They had six Weber carburetors. Uh, they were nearly bulletproof engines. They could just, they could run 24 hour races and then you could drive it another thousand miles to get home if you wanted. Having the opportunity to drive this car on my own and to really extend its legs and, and run it through its paces out in the, in the beautiful hills, there's no better way to experience a car like this. There was something about it being so rare. You know, only 36 GTOs were ever made and only three of this body style. But to be in a car that has so much history, let alone a car my father won some important races in, it's just, it's a special experience. All around, I think the GTO, is, they achieved a great balance of aerodynamics, great handling, and a car that was all around a great performer, and it showed by beating all of its competitors.